So happy to welcome you to MNN. It's been nice talking to you on the phone. And I congratulate you on the book and the DVD. It's magnificent. I've really enjoyed it very much, and I'm really you, looking Al. forward to this. It's good to welcome you to MNN. Nice to be here. And in the audience, uh, welcome to Conversations. We're, we're talking now in this segment with um, Scott Chamberlain uh, Hoyt, and he's a multifaceted gentleman, has a very interesting background we're going to be talking some about. Uh, currently, he seems to be in a phase where he's doing filmmaking, and he's also a budding uh, tea connoisseur, and he's had an interest <laughs> in that, and he's written a most enlightening and interesting book called The Meaning of Tea, which we'll be able to show in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in a close-up here. And also, he's put together with a team of people um, a very engaging and beautifully put together DVD called The Meaning of Tea. And we're going to show some examples from that. But uh, without further ado, welcome, welcome very much, Scott. It's so good to welcome you to Manhattan Network Public Access. It's good Access. to be here, Hal. Thank you very much. I wonder if you could share. I've read some of it. You had an interesting background, your own background, born and raised, educated, in an interesting family setting, mm -hmm. and so forth. And then we'll get into a discussion off that platform sure. of, uh, of, the, of the book and the project. Yeah. Well, uh, when I was born, mm -hmm. um, the Garden State was the Garden State. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. where I'm from. Jersey, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, I come from uh, about 18 miles due west of here originally, uh -huh. uh, and I grew up mainly in the leafy suburbs. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, you know, tea didn't grow out, grow out there much. Not much. Not, not much. Not too good and tea when country. I was growing up, you know, uh -huh. we, uh, all we really had to drink mm -hmm. was this stuff called, uh, well, I won't say it by name, but, you mm -hmm. know, that... Tea bag tea. Tea bag, exactly. Yeah, that was that was what tea was when I was growing up. Yes, right. Lipton. Huh? Well, I, yeah, or it could others. be another. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. But the meaning of tea really is not about tea bag tea. Uh -huh. It's really about, in a way, what we're doing right now, having a conversation. Right. Okay. And tea is a is a unique species of plant because it really enables you to connect to the natural world if you have a higher quality tea than the tea fannings and tea dust that you would typically find in a tea bag. Um, okay, appreciate that. I suppose the people at, uh, at Lipton's would like to take exception. I remember once going, they were in Jersey, they had their testing laboratory uh, on, the, on, the, uh, uh, on the freeway leading up to the freeway over in Jersey. We went there and met the fellow who was the tea tester mm -hmm. for Lipton. Sure. And they had a thing that it all, t it was very interesting and everything. Mm -hmm. And they do supply tea bags and they have to a great numbers of people. And there, it's a huge industry, I guess, supplying yeah. tea. Because as I see from your reading, it's perhaps the most popular beverage in the world. Yeah. That's right. In many varieties mm -hmm. and so forth. That's right. But I just mentioned, uh, get a plug in for the people who make the mass tea bag to touch the sure. tea bag movement. They got this tea bag movement going politically now. I don't think there's any connection with that. No. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I do, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I wonder, could we share your own background? Yeah, I'd be happy If you to. don't mind. Yeah. Because you had a very interesting grandfather, mm -hmm. and in your, your book, uh, you talk about that. And it might be worth mentioning because. Mm -hmm. uh, he had sure. a, a hand in uh, strongly influencing the uh, pattern of uh, development of the United States of America. And indeed, my great-great-grandfather, as a matter oh. of fact, uh -huh. because um, the, the um, company that he actually built uh -huh. back in the uh, late 1800s. Well, really? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. it was called the Carter Medicine Company. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, he established a, a very well-known trademark, at least for those of us that are over the age of 50, let's say, that would know that. Uh -huh. uh, it was called Carter's Little Liver Pills. Oh, absolutely. There's no sure. question. But w my grandfather, however, um, mm -hmm. he, he actually uh, pushed the company to another level. Mm -hmm. and uh, That was still the Carter... It was called Carter Wallace. Yeah. If you Carter. have the 1992 edition of Trivial Pursuit, okay, yes. Carter yeah. Wallace is the answer to the question: uh -huh. Who is the maker of Trojan brand condoms? Okay. <laughs> Amazing what you can find. Yeah. And my okay. grandfather, uh -huh. just shy of his 90th birthday, made uh -huh. that made the decision to buy that company back mm. in 1986. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then your grandfather came along. Was he a chemist, or what was he that put him in that uh, position? My grandfather. And he was still with yeah. the company. Well, he That's actually. That's a family company. Like. Well, he cut his eye teeth uh -huh. over. Um, 
in France after World War I. He was in the wine import-export business. Okay. And that business actually failed miserably. Oh, really? But okay. he came over and he uh, basically uh, took the reins of control uh, from the family, from my great-grandfather, great-grand, yeah, great-grandfather. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Yeah. And was uh, in charge of the company. Yeah. And yeah. then was responsible. And uh, you have a note in there when you were five. That's in your right. sailor suit, well, that's and right. you were taken somewhere, and it was really engaging, and so forth. And yeah. there was even a picture in the book of that. Well, you know, I, I felt it was it was important mm -hmm. uh, in this book, the meaning of tea, yeah. to have a little biographical reference and my early experience mm -hmm. with uh, connection to plant life. Yes, because I recall distinctly when I was that age, mm -hmm. wondering where all the plants were, and yet I was digging earth for a plant. Yeah. How curious, yeah. right? Uh -huh, yeah. And uh, yeah. there were no plants around, uh -huh. just a lot of earth that was turned over in a, in a, in a kind of floodplain. There, where you were living, like you mean? No, where the, no. Where the plant was built. I, I dug oh, earth, the plant. I dug earth for this manufacturing plant uh -huh. back in 1953 with my grandfather and the governor of New Jersey, Governor Minor at the time. Okay. Yeah. You, oh, you, you like a, a earth turning earth, to set exactly. up the construction of the new ceremony. thing. ceremony, that's breaking correct. Earth, sir, earth yes. and breaking ceremony. Yes. Yeah, and you were driven somewhere on a day, and from the writing and so that's forth, right. you wondered where you were going and I all of that. I was swept away. That's you right. You were swept away, and you were yeah. in short trousers. Short I was pants. in a sailor suit. And a I had sailor a, suit, and yeah. I had a silver shovel in my hand. And you were five. And I was five years old. And there's old. pictures of you sitting with gentlemen at the head of a table. That's right. And they were celebrating a lot something. Of, a lot of much and it older. And had to do with your grandfather. Mm, that's right. And what was that something that they were celebrating? If well, you can share they, were, with they were there to mark the occasion to build a pharmaceutical plant that made a product called Milltown. Milltown. Right, yeah. well, and uh, for those of us that may well, remember, yeah. it's, it's still Milt around. Yeah, right. right. But you know, the odd thing is that tea for over 5,000 years, and okay. perhaps longer back in human history, uh -huh. has done basically the same thing that Milltown does. Really? And like a lot of plants, mm -hmm. it does the same thing more gradually and gently without the adverse side effects mm -hmm. and the problems that occur with pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah, Milltown was a, uh, a a standard thing back in the 50s and 60s. Well, in many a ways. A, a soothing, tranquilizing yeah, effect on yeah, the well, consciousness. Of course, yeah. back then you couldn't advertise these drugs on television. Oh, and, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, more people they died. Couldn't? Not not back then. You couldn't. You not couldn't really? advertise a, a Could pharmaceutical you? drug till recently. Oh, really? It was pharmaceutical. Uh, yeah. You could advertise aspirin or on, tele on television. I'm on talking te about okay, television yeah. advertising. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. Huh? But you yeah. know, there are thousands of deaths that are caused every year mm -hmm. by taking taking pharmaceutical drugs, mm -hmm. and I don't know of a single case of anybody dying from a cup of tea. Uh, I don't think so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And tea's been there. I heard you say five thousand years. Well, uh, the legendary emperor of China, uh -huh. okay, pur purportedly um, is credited with uh, identifying this plant, and there are various myths about how that happened. Sure. But uh, the written history probably goes back in Chinese literature 500 to 2,000 years old, depending on how you, how you mark time. Right, right. Mm. And is it China we associate with the beginning? Because we think of Darjeeling and we think of India. Well, when we I think, think of, of the very beginning, I really think of nature in a pristine okay. form. Good, okay. You think, know, begin because with that. Tea, well, because tea, tea, according to what I've read recently, mm -hmm. botanists estimate that the tea as we know it, mm -hmm. this Camellia sinensis sinensis, species mm -hmm. is probably about a million years old. Really? Yes. That's very interesting. So it existed in its own right long before we Homo sapiens walked this good earth. It had a long mm -hmm. shelf life. It had a long shelf in life. The, in the book a long of evolution. time to brew. Yeah, long in, time in, to in brew. The, in, the, in, the, in the mountain regions of western China where Burma well, and India and China all come together. That's where it was associated with the birth of at least the research. Well, the it show, actually right? extends all the way across um, southern Asia into Vietnam as well. Okay, and it grew wild. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a relative of the ornamental camellia. Ornamental camellia? Yes, and, but you can't, you can't make a tea from ornamental camellias. You can only make a tea from a camellia sinensis species of that, of that plant. I see. That's like yeah. the taxonomy of the yeah. whole thing and yes. everything like yeah. that. That's right. Yeah. And so it was in a certain sense we cultivate it now, and they're tea growers. It's a great art. And there's a great deal of art and careful consideration involved with tea all the way from the growing to the mm -hmm. consuming That's of right. tea. Well, it's, a, it's got a special There are quality. hundreds of varietals of tea 
That's and, what the, I'm and the interesting thing is that about 70% of those varietals mm -hmm. uh, actually stem from that region uh, where Burma and China and India all come together, okay. which is Western Yunnan province today in China. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a place that's politically very volatile now, too, with Tibet no. uh, just over to the east and that, mm -hmm. or west. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's where it originated, yeah. more or less. We yeah. think that's But I think pretty early, early on, people recognized that tea had health benefits uh -huh. that uh, no single plant in and of itself uh -huh. has. Uh -huh. In fact, when you look at the way the Chinese uh, uh, formularies construct herbal remedies, okay. they're mostly grouped in with other herbs yeah. but tea stands by itself really yes it does there's yeah. no you don't find at least today you don't find yeah. perhaps for 1500 years in china mm -hmm. in the history you don't find tea blended with any other herbs but you might find it blended with um, food substances f food substances actually mm -hmm. yeah well it's blended often yeah yeah okay and for it, example and the tibetans enjoy yeah. tea with yak butter and oh, really? they add salt. Uh -huh. yeah. So their, pra thing. their practice of yeah. enjoying tea, you could argue, actually is a, a remnant of an earlier time when yeah. tea was enjoyed back in, say, the 8th century. Uh -huh. It's a really interesting story, mm -hmm. isn't it? How many varieties did you say? And I heard you say that there is one species. Yeah. Is it all of one species? It's not no. separate species? Well, according to... According or the taxonomy? That's a very good question. According to a friend who's a, a well a world-renowned botanist. Right. He says there's only one species. Okay. 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 So uh, I suppose it would be more correct to say that there are hundreds if not thousands of varietals, uh, varietals of this one species, Camellia right. sinensis. Right. Mm -hmm. And what is it again? How do you Camellia sinensis. It's not anything to do with chamomile. No. Chamomile is a different opposite. That's a different thing. Chamomile is a different herbal plant. That's a different herbal plant that makes a different drink that is uh, supposedly help people go to sleep and mm -hmm. relax, but it's not a tea. It's Well, it depends on your point of view. Okay. 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 Uh, some people would say that herbal herbals uh -huh. or plants that are not Camellia sinensis uh -huh. are not beverage tea and therefore not true tea. Mm -hmm. The French have a word for that. They call them tisans. 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 Yeah, uh -huh. herbals. Tisans. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. That, that's really interesting. But uh, a friend of mine who um, who is the founder of the American Botanical Council, uh -huh. uh, I like the way, way he puts it. Mark yeah. Blumenthal says that tea is the gateway herb to all other herbs. That's interesting. It right. opens your mind to the possibilities in the plant world. Mm -hmm. And if you take time mm -hmm. and listen to the tea plant speak to you, mm -hmm. it enables you to connect with nature. That's a big uh, gateway. Would you like to, to try some? Uh, I would indeed. In well, fact, I, we I have a couple some. of cups here. I brought and, you some. And um, this is very, yeah. what have we got here? When you explain, this we got is, two cups here we can well, see. Well, this and is maybe from we can Taiwan. come in with the uh, robotic camera. The, now, can wait a minute, that? let's see if we can bring it in there. There, you can show it there, and yeah, then there you can go. come in on what he's got. What have you got there, Scott? Okay, this is an oolong. It's from an Taiwan. Oolong. Mm -hmm. An oolong tea. Yeah. Okay. It's called the uh, Chinese name is Dongfeng Mei Ren. Okay. And uh, could be translated as um, Eastern Beauty Tea. Eastern Beauty Tea. Dongfeng. Mm. Dongfeng Mei Ren. Dongfeng Mei Ren. Mm -hmm. Dongfeng Mei Ren. That sounds like a rap song. Mm -hmm. No, it could be. Yeah. It's, well, it'll make uh, you sing if you drink yeah, it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this is an oolong. You know, in, right? in Taiwan, uh, oolong is a part. You got. You got. Yeah. Uh, you know, yes. all kinds of. Uh, That's right. Smoke tasting ones and everything, but right? Well, you know, you have there are about six kinds of. Is it important teas. we drink this before while it's hot? I think it's a good idea. Or should we do it now? Yes. Should we do? Cheers. And do what is it? Do we say cheers? Is well, that is you could there? Say, you could say nothing. This is rude. Let the tea now, speak just, for itself. And do is hmm. there? There's a tea ceremony, is there not? We want to talk about, but you just sip it, and the the protocol is you sip it. You don't gulp it, right? You, feel you don't it. drink it like Coca-Cola. You just feel it. You take it. You okay. let you just feel it and allow it to do its work. That's all you have to do. Boy, that's really good, isn't it? I think I'm going to start. This is oolong. Mm -hmm. Is this a popular tea, this one that we're sipping now? Well, actually, uh, teas like this are increasingly popular. Uh -huh. And in this country, uh, the growth in mm. the, uh, f of, of consumption uh -huh. for tea all by itself since 1990 is over 400 percent. A growth over ni since 1990? Yes. My lord. Yes. But a lot of that growth isn't coming from tea bag tea. Uh -huh. It's coming from these whole leaf teas 
like this oolong that we're a drinking whole, right whole, here. A whole leaf tea is one that you get from the, uh, in a certain form, um, there you've got the tea. Yeah. Let me uh, let me. Uh, you seem pull to have. If I, is it cry, is it fair to say disdain for the tea bag thing? Not at all. Not not at all. It's I'm, just I'm, a, I'm a good American. Do they have really? If high there's nothing else, uh -huh. if there's nothing else to drink on a hot summer day, you'll do. Living. And there's no, I'll do any anything that's in a tea bag. Uh -huh. I, I have to admit. What do they have in the tea bag? Do you think? Are you familiar with the tea? That yeah, I'm, goes I'm into a little the familiar. Tea? Yeah, I have understand. Have you ever been to the tasting facility of tea, Lipton tea? I never I'm have. Just, it's just right up on the road up here. You I know. could go with some nice guy. Yeah. I could send you a link to his well, name. Well, they're very nice people. They're nice guy. They went in. They showed the way they taste. Well, you know, to their credit, mm -hmm. they recognize now on their packaging mm. that tea has many health benefits. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. That Coca-Cola, for example, might not. Mm -hmm. And you know, environmentally speaking, yeah. unlike Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. it only takes one liter of water to make one liter of tea. Really? That's it true. takes eight liters of water to make eight liters of Coca-Cola. Well, that's one and liter world, of water to make one liter yeah, of Coca-Cola. Yeah, but the world we live in is increasingly under duress from a large population worldwide. Yeah. And in many areas, people are still are struggling right now to have clean, fresh water Absolutely to make their tea. Absolutely a major question, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but you said it takes one liter of water to make one liter of tea, and it takes six liters of Coke to make a uh, water to make six liters of Coke. Something that's like that. That's the same ratio. Yeah, that's one liter to each. I mean, it's not any different. Six liters of water. No, eight liters of water to make one bottle up to make one liter one liter of Coke. Excuse me. Oh, I it's misspoke. got that. Why? I misspoke. Why does it take so I, many? I, they didn't let me in the plant you, to find you out. Got it, that's know. a fact. That's not just a, a, a surmise or something. That's a fact. There was a film yeah. uh, entitled Water. Uh huh. And the person that did this film uh, had that little factoid in the film. So that may not be true. Maybe it's only six liters of water for every one liter of Coca Cola. But in this film called Water, I believe it's called Water, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, it's uh, so that's liters. your source for that? That's my one now, source. Now, have, have you checked it at the American Museum, uh, the American Museum, or the American Association of Tea Factories, or I with the establishment that. who keeps you know, the flame of the put more absolute security of the ref uh, F references that are being made to these important research issues? I'm making a joke. I know you are. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know I you know. are. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> saying that. Yeah, that that's that's really uh, that's really interesting that they should do that. I don't quite know why that would be. Mm -hmm. I did research on the, uh, well, among the Aymara people of Bolivia. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, mm -hmm. this is really good. I'm trying to get to the leaves here, Harold, so you can see the leaves. Well, what happens, is it bad to let the leaves come in? Oh, you've got a, a strainer. Well, I want to show you what mm. Ooh, long. two leaves and a bud look like. Okay. Because, you know, for mm. most of us that uh, grew up with tea bag tea, yeah. the only thing we ever experienced were the tea fannings and tea dust in that tea bag. And that tea mainly comes from large factory farms in Argentina. It doesn't come from India or China or other places where, where, where tea is. Uh, but you get known. you get Darjeeling and you get. Uh, yeah. Uh, There's a lot of history to tea. Yeah, I know. Well, you said five thousand. No, five thousand years. Is it? Um, well, it, it comes originally from. Um, you know, that area of China and mm -hmm. in Burma and that, right, is where they yep. think that first the tea was uh, discovered to have these properties and used by human beings. Mm -hmm. Is that called domestication of it? Cultivation. Cultivation, it's, it's a domestication. Yep. In terms of agriculture, there's been four major staples that were developed that made possible civilization by having security from the food quest. Mm -hmm. One was wheat and barley in this Mesopotamia in Europe. Mm -hmm. Another was rice and a thing mm -hmm. in Asia, in China. Mm -hmm. And there's a complex of foods, but they have a staple, so they get security, made civilization possible. Another was maize mm -hmm. in Mexico with gourds and things. Mm -hmm. and they. And then there's another one, the high highlands of, of, of Bolivia. Sure. Around Lake Titicaca. That's where I did right. my dissertation oh, really? about the Aymara peoples. And that civilization oh. goes way back. But they talk about it as being a cultural hearth, but it was the domestication of the papa mm -hmm. uh, that took Potatoes. a long time. It took hundreds of years for them to see, uh, in, in the case of the Tehuacan Valley in Mexico, mm -hmm. it took hundreds of years for them to find what were very small what was to become um, corn, mm -hmm. kernel corn, very small, to select it out, and it took hundreds of years for them to get it to where it actually became a staple. Mm -hmm. Was there anything like that in terms of the history of uh, tea, or was it just 
pretty much this oolong tea is the same tea that was grown 5,000 or how many years ago did you say it must be historically over well, in China? Well, more an, as a legend. A legend. Yeah, recorded history would go back about 2,000 years. Okay. Then. But if you're asking me about the, the varietals, okay, of course, it depends on um, the close observation and time given by the farmers uh -huh. in various microclimates or mm -hmm. terroirs, as they would, terroirs, as they would say in the wine industry. Mm -hmm. My French is not very good. It, it might non-existent, so it's better you don't use it sure. if you can. But anyway, but here, here are two. Okay, this is what they pluck things. when they pluck the top. Okay, of let's the, uh, see if yeah. uh, maybe if I hold this up. Can anybody come in? It's about the size of no, a that's moth. That's two leaves in a bud. And there's two leaves in a bud. And if, where is the robotic camera? Maybe you can come in on this and show. That's two leaves in a bud, and that's what the tea pickers are ticking, and that's what. Uh, that's right. That's what is there. That's right. But was it domesticated, or is it wild? Is there horticulture? Is there a seeking of hybrid? Do they cross fertilize them? Do they come up with different tastes? Is this something that didn't exist at the beginning, but has been developed in the course, like in the case of those other staples or other agricultural products, they have new things developing? And has that been part of the history of tea, that they've uh, improved it, cross fertilized, and that sort of thing? Or well, not. I guess my answer uh, would be that um, I am not an expert. Oh. Nor am I an authority on mm. tea. Outside of that, I'm you someone got... who loves tea uh -huh. and who allows tea to speak to me and allows me to uh, be a more effective uh, human being in connection with other human beings. And that's why I did this film and this book. Okay, but yeah. you did go around the world talking to, and you done you did interviews with yes. a great number of people well, who book, know about the tea. Book, and the I wondered if tea. The book, The a, Meaning of Tea, is yeah. actually derived from over 50 interviews in eight countries around the world. Right, yeah. And this film With itself, a full film crew. Well, a, a small film crew. A full a small, no, but I meant a film crew taking it yes. into account the, digi, the, uh, the video that you were producing, yeah. Yeah, well, we also well shot 16 book. millimeter as well. You shot 16 millimeter, mm -hmm. and in what, what format in the... In it's the a, what's called prosumer video, so it's not the, uh, like the equipment you have here in your studio. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. it was caught that way. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you edited it on Final Cut and everything? We filmed in Morocco, uh -huh. Taiwan, uh -huh. Japan, mm -hmm. England, Ireland, France, and T South Dakota. You count England and Ireland the same? Why would I they, count them the same? Well, you, see, you said England, Ireland, separate. England, Ireland, and France. England, Ireland, and France. So the regional. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Regional, because well, you have Chinese tea, you have we Darjeeling, had a, we had a budget. India. We had a budget. We couldn't go to every country in the world. Okay, mm -hmm. right, right, right. So, and I think um, we Americans tend to associate tea with British tea to some extent. Sure. Well, that's changing, I think, now. Really? Uh, because in this, in this tiny planet of ours, we are increasingly become aware of the, of the uh, connection to other, other uh, cultures, yes, other tea yeah. cultures, for that, for that matter. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, the cover of The Meaning of Tea, um, that it actually comes from Morocco. That's a father and a son. It's a wonderful photograph of the son, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'd like to ask you if we could play Why? a role a little bit of the tape. Yes, we've got some role in footage from your film, from your DVD. Yeah. And I think we have a first thing that they could begin to set up in the booth and so forth. Maybe you could, in a certain sense, set it up, what it is and what it presents. And it's relatively brief. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be coming back later with another insert. Mm -hmm. But what is the, set, what well, is the film that we're what you're, what see going to see a clip of What we're first going to see now is, is the trailer for the film mm -hmm. and uh, a location that will be very evident to the, uh, to the people watching the film. Um, I think you'll be able, it'll speak for itself. And it's going to last about how long? This, uh, uh, this, piece this first at? segment will last only three minutes. Three minutes and then we'll mm -hmm. come back. And we'll come back. Okay, fine. Let's set it up and see if we got that huge. So if you could run that in the booth now, then we're talking again with Scott um, Chamberlain um, Hoyt and uh, talking about his book and showing a clip from his film, The Meaning of Tea, a beautifully put together book and a beautifully put together... Tea, no. Tea is safe. It's a safe okay. drink. It's mamby-pamby. It's sort of nothing-y. It's like drinking warm, tepid water with something in it that you can't quite identify. But I know people who swear by it. I believe the ritual of, of drinking tea is a very nice ritual which really most of us, with the modern tea bag, have completely cast aside.
there are many people that say that silver is the only uh, product that one should use for pouring and making tea. Porcelain is an inferior uh, teapot to use. The English take everything too seriously. Yeah. Irish people are a lot more relaxed about a lot of things. You know, the English would take tea as a sort of um, more formal, you know. I think, I get the impression anyway from English people that, you know, the tea has to be in a certain cup and stored a certain way. An Irish person, if I go back far enough, I can walk on the billings and I can remember fellas drinking tea out of jam jars. And actually tea out of glass, especially out of a jam jar, or a milk bottle. A lot of people wouldn't remember milk bottles, but we did have milk bottles with glass. Tea tastes excellent, really good. Okay, well that's beautiful in that, and you know that's a that's a, uh, an interesting thing um, that we got. We have another one, a longer one that we're going to show a little bit down the line and everything. But it's really well done. And talk about the talk about the whole experience. When did you get the idea of doing a film on this subject of tea? Sure. And is it true that it's the most consumed beverage in the world mm -hmm. now? Because here we think of coffee. We That's think right. of uh, coffee's had a big uh, run, as it were, in the human society. Billions of cups are consumed. Of tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all across the world, all too. All across is it the not? world, yeah. It came to be associated with Britain in our minds, didn't it? They have tea time, and they make That's a big right. thing out of it in Britain and so forth. Mm -hmm. But share a little bit of that larger dimension of sure. the use of tea across no. the world. Well, if you go on to the meaning of tea.com, yes, uh -huh. you can read about this a little more in depth. Yes. And of course, there are a number of books that deal with the subject that uh, surpass what the meaning of tea as a work of art was attempting to accomplish. Okay. Really, this film and this book were not meant to be heavy on the facts regarding history, mm -hmm. but more to get to the core understanding of what the meaning of tea is all about. Okay. And Harold, tea has many meanings okay. to many people. Uh -huh. That's why I decided it would be best to take this film crew around the world and uh -huh. ask people what it meant to them in their lives. Uh -huh. And you know, a lot of things happened all because tea itself made that happen. That's interesting. And so, you know, tea is not just about health benefits uh -huh. or about a, a cultivar that, um, that um, unlike other um, plants, corn and such, that wreak terrible environmental devastation. Tea actually uh, helps preserve land. And really? sure it does on hillsides does in India that would otherwise nitrate? have landslides. Oh. But the third point I was trying to make was, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, is that tea really is, it could be credited for m virtually most of the art that we have in this world, be it music, be it painting, uh, be it poetry. Uh, it, a lot of it stems from tea. And you know, if you compare uh, poetry written under the influence of alcohol, let's mm -hmm. say beer, for example, uh -huh. the subtle subtlety mm -hmm. of a poem or song written under the influence of beer or rum is completely missing. Uh, well, Poe did some things. Well, I could sing 15 Men on a Dead Man's Chest, and I right. think you'd get you get my point. Are you a singer? You like to sing? You well, but I don't think sing? I'll do that no, here. No. <laughs> but Edgar Allan Poe I, I, used to put some, uh, Once upon a midnight dreary while I pondered weekend, weary over a many quaint and curious uh -huh. volume of forgotten lore. I think he did that bombed on alcohol. Then you know, I suppose, is that mm -hmm. right, you think so? Well, I think, and Coldridge, I'm not sure, maybe and he was and maybe one Coldridge, of those sober. And maybe yeah. Coldridge yeah. Uh, mm. wrote some poetry uh, under the influence of opium. Mm. Yeah, that's right, yeah, but, uh, some of these others. But this is a, a gentler thing that's also been part of what would be called society at all levels, isn't it? It's not got the properties. There was never a movement to ban tea yeah. It wasn't part of the opium wars uh, mm -hmm. thing of the British in China, yeah. or was it? Did it have political consequences, well, economic it did. consequences? It did. And you know, there's some excellent books about that. I mm -hmm. would recommend, if people are interested in knowing about that, mm -hmm. to read other books. Uh, for example, The True History of Tea, or James Norwood Pratt's book, New Tea Lover's Treasury, mm -hmm. or Jade Elixir um, by Beatrice Honiger. Mm -hmm. Those are all very good books that deal with the history of tea. But the meaning of tea okay, yeah. is a different story. Okay, it's yeah. not about the history. Oh, it's so about what's happening right now yeah. and, and the connection between ourselves mm -hmm. and how we feel. That feeling that really connects us to, to nature. Yeah. Tea as a kind of uh, global connective tissue, if you will. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, soothing. It is, isn't it? Associated mm -hmm. yeah. with that. Well, you know, there Even are two seems, two main seems, constituents, two yeah. flavonoids, two okay, antioxidants in tea. Oh, really? Well, okay. flavonoid is a type of antioxidant. Okay, right. Okay. So health, yeah, yeah. Health, yeah. So one we would recognize um, as caffeine, mm -hmm. and the other one is L-theanine. It has caffeine and tea. Sure. In, in equal measure to coffee or not? Actually, and in proportion. Well, yeah. on a dry weight basis, mm. I understand that tea might have slightly more, but to make tea, you use uh, you use leaves that would only provide about a third as much of the caffeine in the end when you're brewing it and making it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But so, if somebody takes a cup of tea at night, is it going to keep them awake like a cup of coffee would? It could. If you drink enough of it, sure. But there's some soothing things to tea, and like and then and chamomile that's the, and that's or something. The L, and that's the L-thionine. The okay. L-thionine in this plant, like caffeine, helps to awaken the mind. But uh -huh. it has mm -hmm. a, a, a contra effect. Uh -huh. It helps calm you down. Uh -huh. So depending on the kind of tea right. and how it was crafted by the tea artisan, uh -huh. Uh -huh. there is more or less caffeine uh -huh. present. And it's very difficult to know because the research that's available on this is virtually nil. Really, do you think there would be interest in that? And it's well, a big industry, is it not? But the profit margins for tea are not like pharmaceutical drugs. Right. If the people, like Milltown. People selling it, like Milltown. <laughs> yes. That's a very good example. Right, right, Absolutely. Right. That was huge, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And or it's a metaphor for But not just Milltown, yeah. drugs today are are everywhere. Everywhere. They filled the television panel yeah. uh, screens with so ads for I this I, and I that. grew up with this stuff. Yeah, you grew up in okay? a family. Okay, we from the inside. And right. I'll tell you, I didn't feel right about it when I was five years old. I really? knew. Really? Really? Yeah, really. Yeah. Okay. Really. Uh -huh. I'm not... It's a big issue now, before it. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's a big issue because people are experiencing yeah. the ill effects of drugs uh -huh. and they're missing out on, a, in this country, the lights have been turned out, mm -hmm. basically, on botanical medicine for 80 years. Okay, the Europeans, the Japanese, yeah. uh, the Indians, and people in so-called primitive societies All had enjoy the benefits of herbs. Uh -huh. Okay, so Cad this file. You ever see cad file? I don't know what cad the file. Cad file is a, a thing on television. He was a monk that had all the mm. herbs and things that mm. he could uh, cure. Mm. It's true, mm. and they are very curative, and they come out, and that's all they had. They didn't yes. have Eli Lilly and the big dog companies <laughs> right. come up with new things sure. and everything like that. Sure, and they used them, and they were very effective. Yeah. in many cases, and they learned, mm. and they. Is there a difference, let's say, you, you, how many varieties you came up with, is there a difference, um, the taste difference, there's one, what's the one, Earl Grey, mm -hmm. is that the one that sort of smells, uh, tastes yeah. like smoke? Well, Earl, Earl, Gley, smoke? Earl, Earl Grey mm. is flavored with the, uh, the oil of the bergamot. Is it, Which it, is it a citrus. tastes like smoke or something, am I right? Or, that might be right? Lapsang Souchong Lap perhaps. Some, that's the one I was thinking sure. of. I know we used to have Lapsang sure. Souchong and yeah. Earl Grey. And uh, Twinings, yeah. is that a tea company, I guess, That's right. right. They're right. So mm -hmm. those are names that occur that gets into some of the better tea. Big variety, different in taste, different in caffeine, caffeine content, mm -hmm. or that other one that you said was calming. Uh, is there a wide variety within that species of uh, taste and effect in terms sure. of uh, the meaning of tea, as you say, well, by to, consciousness well, well, to be, to and be, or health? To yeah. begin with, mm -hmm. okay, every tea that grows is green. Okay. on the bush. And this bush, if it were to let, if you were just let it grow, would eventually return back to its natural state and be a wild bush or tree. Okay. In fact, the oldest tea tree in the world is something like 1,500 years old. Lives that, mm -hmm. lived that long? So in the, in, the, in the good old days, way back, yeah. before this plant was a cultivar, people would go into forests of tea. That would be like domestication. Cultivar. That means they're cultivating it yeah. rather than just yeah. gathering. Before there That's was a big transition before there to was, Neolithic. Before yeah. there was agriculture. Yeah, right. And right. we were a hunter-gatherer society. That's what we all were. People yeah. would wildcraft. What we would call wildcraft. Yeah. Their, okay. their 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 herbs, their roots, their berries, what have you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. They weren't right. foraging. They were yeah. wildcrafting. I would like to draw a distinction. Yeah. There. What is that distinction? Well, I when I think when I think of a forager, I think well. of someone that picks through garbage. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, when I think of wild crafting, uh -huh. I, I think it, that term refers more to going into the wild and, and crafting something, okay. but also connecting with the plant. I see. Okay. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. And there's a, there was a great appreciation. So there's also that been past. a sort of, um, can I say, um, unfortunate uh -huh. perversion about tea. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of 
bottled beverages claim to have tea in them, and I won't mm. name them by name. You certainly can if you'd like, because I mm. care not to even give them a mention. Uh -huh. But they yes. claim to have tea inside, and they're mostly corn syrup. Uh -huh. You know, even even soda beverages, which have uh, petroleum derivative, derivatives like mm. sodium benzoate mm -hmm. and corn syrup, uh -huh. okay, have a tiny qualifying amount of tea. Mm -hmm. And our Food and Drug Administration doesn't regulate that to say what percentage of tea is in that bottle of, of uh, soda or tea. But one part in a billion, we could still call it well, tea. Well, perhaps. There's a little tea in there. A you homeopathic know. dose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, homeopathic, yeah, that kind yeah. of. Yeah. And, and that was part of uh, uh, help that would be like medical help would be the use of herbs and so forth out of the long haul, probably even back to the caves. But you know, using really, in, in the end, you don't really have to fill your brain mm -hmm. with all these facts about tea. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. because long before, yeah. and, and on the back of my book, yeah, okay. uh, there are about five pages that list all the chemical constituents it goes on in, in the page. tea plant. Yeah, okay. But long before what people knew mm -hmm. that to look this up in a database somewhere, mm -hmm. yeah. and this is, I'm going to give it the credit now to Dr. Jim Duke, who's the author of The Green Pharmacy, okay, okay. he okay. could tell you that mm -hmm. beyond that, mm -hmm. to really experience tea, mm -hmm. all you have to do is take a fairly good quality product and infuse it in hot water. And drink it. And drink it. <laughs> and right. just let it do its work. Right. And the wonders of it are, are associated. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they have this thing, the big uh, Japanese, the tea ceremony. They do. So the, the serving of it and the mm -hmm. brewing of it, it mm -hmm. becomes very elaborate, does it well, not? Well, a little bit like religion. Yeah, right. Tea uh, changes wherever it goes throughout history in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. Well, well, sure. By the cultural context. Cultural yeah. context, cultural mm -hmm. influence. What are you doing? Are you giving me a different kind now? I'm giving you the same thing. Oh, this is more oolong? It's still hot. It's still hot, In hot fact, oolong. It, it may right? be getting hotter. Okay, all oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> under these lights, it could, you know, but <laughs> right. okay. But this is an oolong, and this is a Chinese. And yep, then yeah. uh, we associate India with a source of tea. Yes, well, I mentioned Darjeeling. Uh, I met Darjeeling, yes. Assam, I think, have tea. And, and it's become it's become a big, um, uh, you know, place where the tea growing is associated with. Yes. Where else? Is it in the New World well, much, or where uh, is since the you, tea Since grown? you referenced the opium wars, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, you may know, mm -hmm. and the people in the audience may know, mm -hmm. that the world's first international drug cartel mm -hmm. was the East India Company. You call the them British, a drug cartel? There were other well, they were because that. they were the ones who mm -hmm. had to do something to, to right this terrible trade imbalance mm -hmm. when the British were consuming and importing so much tea. Uh, Sir, and silver, it was the tea silver was flying out of the coffers yeah, of uh -huh. the British uh, treasury. treasury. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So then uh, there was a Scotsman named Robert Fortune. Mm -hmm. Who interesting? Yeah, that's right. Who was yeah. a bot? Okay, and he yeah. he he w had been in China once before, and the uh, he became a big shot. Well, what he did was he yeah. went into China, mm -hmm. uh, disguised as a Manchu, mm -hmm. and he made off with tea seeds and tea seedlings. No kidding. And what what is, are you talking? When, uh, we're talking about around. 1840 something. Oh, really? 1843, 44, 45. British Empire was in full reign. It was, and of course, the emperor of China. Sent one of his officials. This to the same. Very much so. Okay. Yeah. This, by the way, I have to tell you <laughs> that there was more tea consumed since we're here in the Manhattan community. Yeah. There was more tea consumed when this island of Manhattan was called New Amsterdam by the by the Dutch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then in all of England. No kidding. The Dutch were importing teas very much like this from Taiwan and Fujian at a time when the Queen of England was just drinking beer for breakfast. I'll be down. Yeah. yeah. But back to the fellow in the opium war, or the fellow, what was his yeah. name again? It was in... Robert's, Robert Fortune. That's right. Yeah. Scottish botanist. And he was, and you count the... Uh, so those plants, that, those plants that are in Darjeeling today, yeah. okay, uh -huh. they're actually hybrids of the Assam varietal, okay, okay uh -huh. which by the way was not a cultivar when it was discovered mm -hmm. by another Scotsman named Robert Campbell. Mm -hmm. There were tribal peoples living in what are referred to as the Nagalands of 
a yeah. psalm mm -hmm. that were chewing the leaf. Mm -hmm. They weren't putting it into uh, hot water to make an infusion. Yeah, they do that with other herbs, yeah. don't they? Yeah. they use that. So they basically, use thyme, mm -hmm. rosemary, thyme. We got all yeah. kinds of we use. So, herbs. so in India, most of the of, of the tea plants growing in India are from that Assam varietal. Mm -hmm. That is not a cultivar, or mm -hmm. was not a cultivar mm -hmm. at that time. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. But in Darjeeling, you have a hybrid, sort of a crossroads of tea in a sense. Okay. As far as how tea is grown in, in, in today. Do they grow it in massive quantity, or how is it done? Is it horticulture, or is it grown on large estates? Or it's grown on very large estates, uh -huh. but it uh, depends it's on how, you, how you define. You have to have every, a lot of hand attention to it. Every don't you? one of these, every one of these two leaves in the butter picked by hand. You can't have a combine that would go through and pick it all? Well, they do in Argentina. Where they the, do? Is that Lipton the, grows it in Argentina, and okay. they have plants that are cultivated. And also, I think the Japanese, to an extent, will also harvest their teas that way. Mm -hmm. That's one of the major issues, of course, is what to do with the labor component in, in the tea production. Why don't they harvest it that way in Assam? Or with, do you see a quality consideration? You know, Harold, you're mass producing I'm from it. New Jersey. Okay. So I really don't know. Oh, okay. I'm just, it's just a curious. I don't know. I really don't a, know. You, you don't sure. know. So no. good to hear somebody who doesn't know something. I don't something know. I wish I, I, I yes. feel compelled to give you an answer. No, but I think it, it would be a, it might not be uh, makes the, an wanna, accurate answer. It makes me really want to trust all the things you do answer too. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> tea makes me talk a lot. Yeah, sometimes, right. Sometimes. It and does. I, and I have a tendency to. To talk too much. You have a tendency. Well, oh, I know about I'm that under, tendency I'm under, to talk I'm, too much. I am I'll under the you. influence of tea all day long. Are you? You drink tea, right? Really? Yeah. Yeah, around the clock. I'm a coffee guy. You know, I think coffee is American mm. more than tea. Britain is yeah. tea, but it's now coming into America too, and it's also, I think of it as genteel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Coffee is rather more co robust. Well, you do know, you make your stronger. own? Do you make your own tea, coffee? Yeah. You do. Yeah. You stripe for the beans and you go through. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. I just buy this uh, the coffee off the shelf. Sometimes I'll okay. go from the beans. Yeah. I'm not a connoisseur. I just drink uh, strong coffee. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like the Starbucks is all over the place now. It took off like a gangbusters. There's sure. a lot of interest in that. Yeah. Tea houses. We have tea houses. Are there tea houses like Starbucks that are tea? And in England they had tea, um, well, you know. It, you know, you, I have to ask you. So you're asking me uh, the question, are there tea houses like Starbucks? Yeah. You mean tea houses like Starbucks is to coffee? Yeah. Um, or will there be? Uh, what, what's the relationship between the two? Coffee is a very popular drink in this country. In this country in and this the world. In this country, there increasingly are um, small independent tea houses that are operating. Now, Starbucks does sell tea. They do. They do. And but they also they, sell coffee. The coffee, uh -huh. you know, when you go to the department store, I don't know yeah. if you've ever gone to buy a fragrance for yourself or maybe a girlfriend or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They give you coffee beans. They do? Yeah, after Why? you've tried two fragrances so that you can cancel out the memory from having what smelled those. What do you mean those. give you the coffee beans how? You it, chew it, them it, or what? It, what it does is it overpowers the, the, the memory, Olfactory? the scent memory, yes. So if I had, what do you mean, I, give you if I was in a coffee house drinking this tea, mm -hmm. I would have difficulty sensing the subtle aroma and uh -huh. taste of this fine tea. Uh -huh. So tea really should be in a world by itself. I see. Okay. Okay, you That's, are becoming a connoisseur. Well, I said a budding tea kind A of budding kind of seat. <laughs> and, and it's like somebody who can know the bouquet of a wa fine wine or something yeah, that's like a that. Very, I think that's a very uh, Do you have a favorite example. tea? Uh, it, or? I, yeah, I have a lot of favorite teas, many. Oh, no. Uh, so much depends have, on my no, mood. No, what's the number one? The uh, I have no number one. You don't have a number tea one. Tea is all good. Uh -huh. yeah. Are they all from one part of the world, or are they all of a certain nature, the ones that you particularly like? And is it yeah. idiosyncratic, or is it... Really, and the wine, well, you know, when they put I, such I, incredible value yeah. upon a not, wine. Not to confuse, and then, not yeah. to confuse the issue, but mm. I, I not only like teas from India and China, Taiwan, and you know, tea even grows now in Hawaii. By Does the way. it now? I yeah. find some very excellent they tea. They grow coffee from, right too, right? Yeah, they grow, exactly, they do. Yeah. In fact, in the area on what the Big Island, digging I'm, I'm, I'm digging in here to show you a oh. handful of Okay, hold it there, of, maybe of the herbs. Can. Hold it there, maybe. Now, this is, not, this is a this handful is not, of herbs. This is not beverage tea here we're talking about, uh -huh. okay? What is this that you This is Vermont certified organic herbal tea. Grown in Vermont, in the Vermont. state of Vermont. And it's, it's certified Vermont organic, mm -hmm. not just um, another tea from somewhere else. It's not chamomile from Egypt. 
Okay. This is grown on our own soil, and oh. we can source herbal teas from our own local growers. I didn't know that. I didn't associate the United States or, or Vermont with tea. Growing. Well, is there tea much grown in, tea, in 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 the United States of America? Well, you know, if you think about what's in the woods of Vermont or any 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 woodland area, you can you can you can find plants. You can wildcraft plants such as the ginseng. Ginseng, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and you can make a tea from from you mind plants. If I, I want to just please smell. do. Oh yes, tell me what do you think. Boy, it's like perfume. Yeah. Boy, that's beautiful. Good. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. That smells wonderful. Listen, yeah. one thing I really enjoy talking to you, and it's yes. a big subject, yeah, and, it, and I congratulate you enormously. You. One thing we've got another clip, mm -hmm. and we want to get it in. We're into, yeah, uh, you, you know, we ought yeah. to do that. And the trouble is, I get carried away because it's so damned interesting, and the yeah. subject is so interesting. Right. But let's see if we can't set up that other clip. And I remind you again, we're talking to Scott Chamberlain uh, Hoyt, who has produced this very interesting book, *The Meaning of Tea*, and the companion video and we got another piece a little longer right that you that we mm. want to include this is these are outtakes from the uh, Japanese tea ceremony that you were asking me about earlier uh -huh. uh, and they were filmed in Kyoto Tokyo and on a rooftop here in Midtown Manhattan where a friend uh, and his wife have a Japanese garden and a tea house all right let's see if we can't set that up and run that it's second. about six minutes long it, this one goes about six minutes so yeah. let's run it. we can get it in before it mm -hmm. closes down. Let's see if we can't get that going. We can talk until it comes. It was uh, it, some of a shot here in Manhattan as well mm -hmm. as Tokyo. Mm -hmm. The tea ceremony is associated with Japan mm -hmm. as part of yes. a ceremony. But it's or the origins actually occur in the, uh, in the Song Dynasty in China. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that. So anyway. And, I, and the tea ceremony, when you think about it again, the, mm -hmm. three, the three main points here, health benefits, mm -hmm. the connection to nature, and the uh, the uh, connection we have in a larger ecological sense. Uh -huh. And the third point being tea and art. Uh -huh. um, it's been said um, by the uh, uh, Japanese uh, Zen Buddhist uh, Suzuki, one mm -hmm. of the Suzukis, I can't yeah. remember which one, that without art there is no intellect. Yeah, uh, art mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. the goods of civilization. But without tea, uh -huh. the quality of art may not be what we have today. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. They're very interesting. So okay. tea and Tao and art are really all synonymous for the Japanese. So a, a very important connection. Yeah. yeah, very good. So can we run that tape now then please, Willie, or if you're having a problem, let me know. But it's about a six minute piece. Here we go. Okay, maybe you could pump it in here.
so sad. I'm sorry too, because it was a, I had a great one lined up for you. I thought he had it straight. Touch with me. Okay. I liked what he wrote, the way he wrote in his he mind. Was, he was the one who did all the heavy lifting. You know, yeah. I did a lot of the book. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I did the interviews, and of course. But... That must have been a fun trip. How many were in the crew? How many of you were there? Three or four? Three or four. Yeah. Have you traveled a lot? I've been to over 65 countries. How many? just noted this 195 now. I was always been saying for years, 192. There must be three new <laughs> countries. I don't know where they come from. Like, uh, you know, Japan, India, Bhutan, you know, over Europe, Tanzania, Morocco, South America, New Zealand, Australia, all of them. This is taken very seriously, the tea ceremony. Oh, yes. You were in Kyoto? Well, I'm not a big, I'm not a huge fan of Japanese tea ceremony, personally. I, I like the Ch Chinese, uh, what's called Kung Fu method of uh, making what? Kung Fu method. Kung Fu? Yeah, I don't have the, I don't have the. <laughs> and so forth. You worked on that film. You're happy with that. Uh, well, you're an associate. You have an associate. Uh, Phil, is it? No, what's his name? Phil Cousineau. Cousineau, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. He had a lot to do with helping put this together. That, yes, he did very much. Uh, he, he did all the heavy lifting mm -hmm. to uh, wade through about 2,000 pages of transcripts from the 50 or 60 interviews that were conducted around the world by myself and with yeah. my film crew, yes. And in fact, Phil will be here on March 17th okay. at Asia Society along with me and James Norwood Pratt, mm -hmm. who is a preeminent tea sage mm -hmm. and a world authority on tea. And, there's and the film a, will be screaming at Asia Society. At the Asia Society yes, will the be meaning good, tea, yeah. Yes, on St. Patrick's Day, so we'll be, compete, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be serving green tea. Uh -huh, you'll be serving uh, green tea with all that green they'll beer. Be, they'll be Avenue. Well, yes. Yeah, and people right. may want to drop by for a 
for a, a, weed, a weed dram of, of, of rejuvenation tea, right, right. which we'll have, this certified yeah. uh, Vermont certified organic. Uh -huh. But there will also be Japanese and Chinese teas as well. Are you going to film? Are you going to show the film, the whole film, or something? The entire like? film will be shown. Yes. Okay. Yes. That, and what's the date? Seventeenth. Seventeenth of, 17 of March. Seventeenth of March. What time? Um, if you go to Asia Society website, you can verify. Well, I believe it's around six o'clock. That it's six o'clock. Yeah, there'll the be event a, an hour-long tea. Uh, Tea set up, uh -huh. and the film starts rolling about seven o'clock, I believe. I see, and it's how long exactly? Seventy-four minutes long. Seventy-four minutes long. Yes. This would be. I should think there'd be a lot of interest in this in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. um, any thought about having it go into festivals or anything of that well, sort? Well, of it thing? has actually traveled quite extensively through festivals. Has it? Uh, huh? Yes, we were at the, for example, the Wisconsin Film Festival. It sold out within three days. No fooling. And uh, the audience um, of 125 people on each screening loved the film. Mm -hmm. But really, a lot depends on people's. Um, uh, predisposition to uh, feeling a connection to tea already. Yeah. A lot of people that drink uh, other beverages like coffee or yeah. Coca-Cola uh -huh. may not quite um, be ready for something as subtle and as um, all-pervading and, and connecting to the uh, the natural world as tea. Yes, and that's the point of what your whole venture was, is to be with those subtleties and the, and, and the that's really the, one of the of main this, yeah. points as uh -huh. a, as something that is has these health benefits, uh, has a strong connection to the ecology on this small good earth that we have, mm -hmm. and the art of tea. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, tea really connects us to nature. Mm -hmm. That's what, it, what it's all about. Which we really need, I think, don't you? I think we need. Well, to have in this fast-paced modern back. world, we're losing our connection to tea. I'm afraid. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, uh, too many people these days. It seems to me, are uh, not able to have a conversation unless they're looking down at their their palm, mm -hmm. tapping away. Yeah. And and multitasking. Yeah. Tea it's is completely the, opposite to multitasking. It's the opposite of the multitasking, and it might be a prescription in the biggest sense of the word from some of the ill effects that happens from all that overworked multitasking that is mm. so characteristic of it so has. many. Yes. It may, it, its time may come. It may be coming in a larger way. Well, it's already here. And it, it's here. It's been here it, a it, long it, time. It's always, the, tea is something that's consumed billions and billions of cups. Okay. More than any other beverage Every year. in the world. Is it well, correct? I, I'm not sure about water. Well, water, no. I mean, with the exception of water. Yeah. But any like coffee or coke or soda or anything of that S sort. Quite yes. Yeah. The answer is yes to that. And mm -hmm. it's been there for a long, long time. It has a rich tradition, yes. and it's one that it says acquaints us and connects us to nature. Yeah. And it's got a very, it's got healing properties and so forth. And you've done a masterful job. The book is really interesting. I well, I didn't, I didn't do a thing. T did all the work. Yeah, but you did. You put it together, and you did the well, interviews with these people, are yes. talking about it, yeah. and talking about it with a great deal of philosophical nuance and so forth. Well, and I had to wait. Instances. I had to wait to see what people would say. Yeah, hmm. you gave them a chance to. Yeah, uh, talk. and and they weren't always very cooperative, but for the most part, people were very generous with their time, and they had a lot to say. And then you had to call out what you were going to put in the book, and you've done that, and that's mm -hmm. the whole purpose of the yeah. the meaning of the book is the meaning of tea in that more philosophical. And the name of the book is the meaning of tea. I know. And if you go to the meaning of tea dot com, uh -huh. you can learn more about how to connect more in this realm of mm. tea itself. Well, I congratulate you, and I think it's really good, and it sort of runs counter to the, uh, as you say, the multi